We're back again for another season. This is season two. We're excited. We're ecstatic about this one. Uh, and I know season one might have been a little shaky, but as Ward said in the first episode, we're not pros. You know, this is something that <laughs> we picked it up and, and, and I like where it's going. And we got a lot of good feedback, which is dope. Uh, so shout out to everybody else, to, to everybody that, you know, gave us their feedback and took a listen. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, so, yeah. We're back with season two, and to jump right into it, this episode is about, well, first and foremost, season two of what? Who are we, Warren? We are OTR. Powered by Amadeus. Voices from the inside out. Yes, 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 that's who we are. And I'm Caldrick, and that gentleman that you just heard just now, that's Warren. And yeah, yeah, so we're here to feel your ear. So, jumping into the the first episode of season two, what are we talking about today, Warren? Today, we're going to talk about mental disruption. So, basically, um, do you feel like people, when they go to jail, when they're incarcerated, does that create a mental health issue with them? Mental illness? Let's talk about it. Let's chop it up. Okay, okay. Mental disruption. And for those of you who are trying to figure out what we mean by that, kind of touching on Warren, what Warren just said. Uh, well, to me, I, I don't know if there's a clinical um, definition for that particular word, but to me, mental disruption just means disturbing your psyche. You know what I mean? Like a, a, a shock, a mental shock, you know, being taken out of one environment and placed in a complete different environment, not knowing what the outcome is going to be, not knowing if you'll survive, not knowing what you're like walking into, just a total shock, a total scare, if even and to me, that's a disruption of your mental state, a disruption of your psyche. So when we say mental disruption, that's what we're talking about. A shock to the brain. Mm -hmm. Disturbing shock to the brain, I should say. Jumping right into it. Incarceration, going into an institution, being arrested, having to go do time, first steps, walking in. Do we feel that uh, time spent in the jails, time spent in prisons and institutions, however you want to label them, can that cause a mental disruption? Can that create um, can that create a mental disorder, in a sense, uh, mm -hmm. within an individual? Um, so I've been looking up at I've been looking at some studies um, and some research that I found, and this particular one that I found. Um, it was done, uh, it, it's ASPE, uh, the Assistant Secretary for Planning and Evaluation. So the study was done by them, and uh, there's actually, you can go on their website and you can find it. Uh, it's uh, ASPE.HHS.GOV, um, and you can find this particular uh, report on their site. Um, and there's a lot of things that I'll be referencing from this particular report. The studies on this report were done in the U.S., but if we can, I mean, you know, the jail systems aren't that much different. There are differences, but not that much. So we can reference to a lot of things that they are speaking about within their systems over there. Um, so one of the first things that they mention is that no... Technically, going to jail doesn't make a person crazy, um, if that's what we're thinking, if that's what we're looking at. But time spent, the amount of time spent, and the the way your time is spent in an institution can create um, some psychological effects, um, for sure. And you know, we've seen people, we've seen people go to the bin and come out and turn their life around for the better. Um, and it's not to say that there weren't some harmful, harmful mental effects or psychological effects that occurred, um, but, you know, they were still able to sort of kind of overcome it or fight through it. 
Um, but we've also seen people be incarcerated and coming out different. You know what I mean? Like, you know, your friend gets arrested. He, he does like six, eight, ten years. He comes out and he's not as sociable as he used to be. He's not as intuitive. He's not as, you know, it's like he it's like he's just sitting there like you're staring at a wall. You know, it's not it's not the exciting ready to go, you know, type of individual that that he was when he or she went in. Right. Um, so we've seen that happen and we've seen, you know, people going for misdemeanors and stuff like that and then come back out and increase their level of crime activity. You know, so there that 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 obviously shows that there are things that happen within these institutions that can create change in a person. And we just want to look at we want to look at that, right? Um yo, so yo. Warren, if if I could ask you, right? Do you personally think that jail does change a person? And do you think those changes are reversible? Good question. Um, speaking from a place of experience, because I did like over 10 years in, in, in the bid. Um, yeah. That's enough time, bro. It does fucking change you. 100 fucking percent, it changes you. It, you have to be a very strong person or a damn near fucking alien for it not to change you, to be honest. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I used to be very sociable before I uh, was incarcerated. And according to everybody else who knows me back then and knows me now, they say that I'm a changed guy and I'm a lot calmer and I'm a lot quieter. And, and I attribute that all to my time inside. When you're inside, you know, you don't have the same experiences and a lot of the things that you took for granted being on road, they're not there for you while you're in jail, such as like human contact or, um, you know, just having that whole social aspect of like having friends and family around constantly. When you're in jail, you're surrounded by enemies. You're surrounded by, um, you're surrounded by guards who don't give a fuck about you. And you know, you're pretty much possibly going through the, you know, the, one of the worst situations of your life. So yeah, hell yeah, it changes you. This is, you 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 sparked a question in me, and I said that because you touched on some things that I that I really want to um, elaborate on, you know, within the episode. But right. I'm gonna ask you this question now, as opposed to later, because cool. when you speak about it changing you, there's there's this anger that I hear in your voice, a frust almost like like you're frustrated or you're just. You just want to punch a wall, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to say it. You knew I did. You already know what it is. Well, the rest of them, you guys are so yeah. Yeah, yeah you, when I said wall, I was thinking of those walls inside there, you know what I mean? So the reason why I'm going to ask this question now is you, and we're going to probably touch on this later on in another episode or so, but you actually came out after doing your your pen bid and you started doing a lot of remarkable things that i have to commend you on you know what i mean and and you for the listeners you guys are going to hear about all the amazing things that warren has accomplished since since doing his time later on in the in, in season two but you've done a lot of amazing things and i have to say like i as a colleague as a friend as a as a co-worker i look up to you um in regards to some of these things i appreciate that you sound so angry that that being incarcerated and doing your time changed you, but did it change you for the better or did it change you for the worse? Cause I mean, like, <laughs> you know what I, you get, you see what I'm getting at? I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. See, it, it, it all depends on who you ask. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're ask, um, I guess some of my closest friends, they'll probably say it changed me for the worse because Warren G back then used to be like the life of the party he used to be, you know, the talkative guy and, and, and you know, likes going out, likes doing this, likes doing that. But now I don't like doing none of that shit. I just like to, you know, kick up in my yard, okay. make, make some money, do, you know, do what I got to do. Um, if you ask my mom, she loves it. She likes this new war. You know what I'm saying? She, I, I'm not always in the, the pasta pasta. I'm not always in the politics and whatnot. Um, so, so yeah, it really depends on who you, who you talk to, yeah, right? Um, yeah. Me, that's... If you were to ask me if it was for the better or if it was for the worse, <laughs> <laughs> that's who i want to ask that's who i want to ask on ask um me. i would probably say it is for the worse like the changes i am trying to use in a positive way um 
but I'm definitely not the same guy that I, I used to be. And maybe that's where you're hearing some of that anger from, you know, um, it's extremely hard living your life without any human contact. You know what I'm saying? Like for a good 10 years, like I, I hugging was like a foreign thing to me. You know what I'm saying? Like most I would do is like give somebody a daps. You, you feel what I'm saying? Unless I had a trailer or, or um, yeah. a, a touch visit or anything like that. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, that kind of shit like fucks your head up. And it just, you, you just, you get into a place where it's normal not to experience those things. And it becomes abnormal. It becomes weird and awkward to, you know, like express affection you know physically with somebody else or even mentally with somebody else because even when i was in there i had to shut a piece of myself off mentally and emotionally you feel what i'm saying and i i shut it off for so long i don't think it's i'm capable of reactivating that part and i think that's the part that a lot of my close friends miss and even though my mom loves it and, and she likes it, I kind of miss it too. You feel what I'm saying? Because I'm definitely not the same. Guy. And then you you actually answered another question I was going to ask you, but you know where you said you miss it too. I was going to say so. There are definitely elements to Warren that was lost, and you miss it. Yeah, and there was to be found. That guy's gone, man. But you know, gotta make the best of what mm -hmm. of what your situation is, and, and 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 that's what I'm trying to do, right? But for sure, jail definitely, definitely fucking uh disrupts your psyche disrupts your fucking men your mentality you, know, you feel what i'm saying it's it's kind of fucked up that these things do happen but the one thing that i have to commend you on is like you said even though those good elements are missing from you and you don't know if you could reactivate it in your own words right um you're still able to channel that into something else that's more that's progressive. You get what I'm saying? So I have to commend you on that. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. For real, for real. So now to jump in a couple facts, right? Some jots that I took from, from this site that I got the report from. Um, so it is basically saying two elements. There are two elements that, that greatly um, affect a person's uh, psyche within within institutions and these are two elements that are that exist today and that had occurred because of changes that were made in the prison systems and then we're not saying that these are positive changes but the two main elements one of them is the increased rate of incarcerations right so the jails becoming more packed and you becoming cramped you know going from single cell to two to a cell and in, in certain times, three to a cell, because I've been three to a cell, you know what I mean? And that, that, and three to a cell is completely different than two to a cell, like completely different. It's as different as being your own, the only person in one cell, being three people in a cell. That's like, you have zero privacy. I mean, zero, zero privacy, but within the, within the cell you develop because two to a cell, there's, there's, there's you develop, um, you develop a level of power right so the bottom bunk the bottom bunk obviously goes to the person that's been in that cell the longest or if you both going at the same time it's like who's gonna get the bottom bunk because the bottom bunk is the preferred bunk right right so now there's a there's sort of like a power a power level happening right. there and uh, do you guys become enemies and duke it out or do you guys play a game or do rock paper scissors like you know what i mean right. how do you how do you establish who gets that preferred bunk right and then now when you move to three to a cell you know the chain of command goes down and it's 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 not a it's not a questionable situation it's more of like well you know you, you got to start from there and the way it happens is so you got the i guess the the, the, the alpha i guess you want to say uh, that gets the bottom bunk and then beta gets the 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 top bunk you get what i'm saying and then mm -hmm. the person that comes after that sleeps on the floor because you just mm -hmm. throw a mattress on the floor mm -hmm. and then if let's say i get bail or i get released then the person on the floor moves up to the top bunk so it, it, you know you go <laughs> up in levels so right. so that that creates something you get what I'm saying? That creates something, and I and I don't think it creates anything that's good within three people sharing a cell. You know, um, 
so that was one of the facts that 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 one of the things the elements that that causes that can cause a mental disruption within a person being incarcerated um and the other thing is the interior of the the prisons and jails to this day it's 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 much more harsh cold where it's it's metal uh concrete like it, there's no there's there shouldn't be any warmth to jail but you get what i'm saying because for, for someone that's also been there you you can understand what i'm saying like the new jails that are being built they're just completely different because i spent time in um i spent time in uh in the hearse and i spent time in the pods which is the newer structure of the jail the okay. newly built structure of the jail and that's you know two to a cell all brick not even brick just all slabs of concrete metal right. doors magnetic locks this that mm -hmm. you know what i mean and then i actually did sentence time in the hearse and the sentence side is the older facility right the older structure of the jail and within those rooms now you don't have that big metal magnetic locked door you actually have like a a, a regular like i guess you call it a solid wood door there's no magnetic lock your door actually doesn't even lock unless you have to go to court or you um you're away for the day and the the, the seal will come and lock your door with a key but it's a it's an actual like lock lock it's not like right. this magnetic electronically controlled lock mm -hmm. right so when you open the door you're not opening this big heavy like you know piece of metal that's keeping you encaged um your cell the window in your cell is 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 large and you can actually open uh, open the shutters and get fresh air coming in through the window as opposed to the pod side your window is uh shoot like it, it's like this little slim it's, it's like the size of a of a of a jenga game game box like it's and then a lot of this the inmates what they do is they scratch up the window so you can't even really see outside right. because they don't want to see outside so so you don't so there's a difference in the jail's interior to the newly built jails as opposed to the older jails the older jails still allow you to kind of be yourself and connect a little bit with outside in a, in a sense where you can get fresh air you can actually see outside and yeah. and in the older jails the rooms they're not they're not cells they're more like rooms with single beds right you know what i mean what, so what are you saying you're saying that the conditions is the reason why the conditions contribute to the mental disruption is what you're saying that this article is yeah 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 they contribute and increase right. once one one simple 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 thing mm -hmm. within the two different cells uh, as opposed to all the other many things that are different but one simple thing um in the pods you can't put anything up on the wall you can't if you're if your girl sends you pictures of you her kids your mom family you can't put up any pictures on the wall a magazine cut out that you relate to you can't put you can't stick anything on the wall we do it anyways but the guys can come in and just rip that down <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, where's this? Maple Hurst? They do that at Maple Hurst? <laughs> yeah at Maple Hurst in the pot side now at Maple Hurst when you go to the sentence side now and you're there serving a longer time under better living conditions in your room they actually outline a huge square, a designated square for you to put pictures and things like that for yourself. So even see, so, you see the difference, mm -hmm. right? And and that is another thing that that, like you said, adds to to the mental disruption of a person's psyche right. being incarcerated, right? Simple things like that. So the design, the interior of the jails today, as opposed to the jails in the past, mm -hmm. and just them being so much more overcrowded. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quote something that was said uh, in the article, right. word for word, which is, and I quote, prisons are barely controlled jungles where aggressive and the strong will exploit the weak and the weak are dreadfully aware of this. <laughs> Some prisoners are forced to become remarkably skilled uh, self-monitors. They... And what they mean by that is, is a skilled self-monitor is someone that can calculate and anticipate um, every aspect of their behavior, which might, um, you know, cause an inmate to react a certain way, mm -hmm. right? So, um, basically, it's like, to break that down in a sense, it's like, if, if 
we're seeing something on the TV or let's say I'm on a phone call, mm -hmm. you know, and I hear some really good news and it's news like, let's say, you know, something personal that's going on in my life. And, you know, my boy and my girlfriend said, Hey, you know, this, this came through or this worked out. Right. There's not a lot of other people that might be able to relate to that good news. Mm -hmm. So do I come off the phone all happy and overexcited and stuff and this and that. And then our next person, our next inmate be like, yo, why is he so happy? Mm hmm. Cause he's in jail. I'm in jail. We're not supposed to be happy in jail. Why the hell is this nigga so happy? You know what I mean? Um, excuse my language. Why is this ninja so happy? Um, and then he's probably going to want to exploit that or he's probably going to want to attack that because he can't, he can't relate. He's not happy right now. And I'm in the same to him. I'm in the same position that he's in. So I shouldn't be happy about anything. Right. And that could create a beef that could, that I'm at, a man could actually just walk up to you and punch you the fuck out for you being happy in a place that you're not supposed to be happy. And that's, tell me that's not real. It's a real thing. It doesn't, it, like, it's, it's not as extreme as you say, at least not for me. Cause when I was on a range, if, if a man's going to get at a man because he's smiling a lot, then that, the man that's getting at a man can't live with me kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? That that's, that's, uh, I, I, <laughs> and it's funny that you say that. Cause I'm going to tell you a story where that happened in the dump. Okay. So, so um they, they brought in they brought in new inmates right that just came right. off road and you right. know and in the, in the dawn they when when we're it's all bars right so we're on our range and they line you up against the wall right and then they take the other and they line up because on the dawn you got front side and back side right but everybody's got to come through the front side so they line up everybody on the front side and then they call out your names and they tell you okay you're going on front side you're going on back side right mm -hmm. so we get to see everybody that's there. So everyone's there, whatever. And then there's this, uh, this African Canadian gentleman, um, that came in on our side and he, he didn't look too depressed or he didn't look too upset or anything like that. I, no one knows what his situation is. Right. So he came onto the range and he was being respectful, right? He got his, he got his food and stuff like that and whatever. And the rule is on the dawn, you start from one, one end and you, the showers on the other end. So as soon as someone comes onto the range, we just direct them straight to the back to go read the rules, right? Okay. Because we know as soon as you get on the range, you go straight to the rules, you read the rules and then you go from there. Right. right. So as he's walking on, he walks on and then he says hello to two individuals up top. And I'm kind of like midways down. Right. So, uh, I guess the individual said, you know what, head straight to the back and, and, and he, or they said, read the rules. So as he's making his way down, he like stopped and asked somebody, he's like, Oh, where are the rules? I, I was told to read the rules. And then, uh, someone that was close to me was like, Oh, they're, they're down at the back by the shower. So as he's making his way down the range, he's saying, Hey, to everybody saying, Hey, what's up? Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's up? And like, like my, one of my cellmates like shook his head. He's like, fuck. And I'm like, what? And then he's like, I don't know how long he's going to make it. <laughs> and, and the reason why he said that is because that guy kind of had a pep in his step as he was coming into the range, okay. you know, per se. Right. And shortly after that, we just heard, we just heard someone scream out. And when we looked back, that was that same dude that walked on the range with a pep in his step, laying on the ground, saying, please don't hit me, please don't hit me, because somebody punched him up. So, okay. so, so, so that, that, that actually can happen, right? And I'm not a big person on the range, so I was never like, you know, um, so it's not like I can go out and say like, oh, who did this, who did this, that, whatever, because it could very well be the man that's running the range that punched him up. Then what do you do? You can't say, you can't say, oh, I can't live with this guy on my range. You don't have control over that. You know what I mean? But this is a true actual story that happened. Yeah. yeah. Right. So shit can get sticky like that. Trust me. And again, these are the type of things that fuck with somebody. hundred percent. Mentally, because now if he were to internalize that experience, right, he's then going to say to himself, no, I can't be nice to everybody, which growing up, we all know. You know, but we do need people like that in the world to break these, these negative cycles, mm. right? But someone just broke, someone could have possibly just broke that in him. And now he's an added statistic to the negative cycle that, that, that we can't be nice to each other, that we can't acknowledge each other in a, in a positive way. Right. Right. Even if we're, we're, we're all in a bad situation. 
Mm-hmm. Right? Stay tuned for part two. Okay, okay, okay. It's time to get into our featured artist and song of the week. This week, we got some fire for you as always. The boy Jadeo with his track, Big Bad Wolf. Check this one out. It has a dope message. OTR, voices from the inside out. Hey, yo, what's good? It's your boy Jadeo, and you're listening to Off the Record, powered by Amadeus. Now, this next track you're about to hear is Big Bad Wolf. This is for all you badass kids. Stay out of trouble. Seriously, did you really take that in? Strong message. Jadeo, Big Bad Wolf. You heard it here first, OTR. Voices from the inside out. Okay. Pick it up where I left off at. Lil Jimmy got a four gram mustache. In the whip with the work in the backpack. Lil Jimmy in the wolf moving white crack. Wolf up pissed off, I'm in try to hijack. 50 living devil willing, he a villain grilling. Whoever the wolf says is trying to trespass. But this won't last. Jimmy no 